Greetings and salutations everyone out there on YouTube, all of the kind commenters and all of the not so kind commenters. This is Christopher McKee, your ham-fisted guitar player from Alamo Music Center who can't play a D chord. Um, you can find us online at alamomusic.com and of course here in San Antonio, downtown just about a block from the Riverwalk. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a, a guide, a comparison for you with Les Paul models, both from Epiphone and from Gibson. The idea is to go over some of the most popular models within these lineups, outline the differences between each one of them, and uh, what might uh, appeal to you as a player. So why get a Les Paul standard versus a Les Paul traditional, classic, an ES like I have in my lap here, or one of the Epiphone models as well. So we hope you find this video um, entertaining and informational, and we hope that it helps you on your path to finding the perfect guitar to, sit, to suit your needs. So, with that being said, let's take a look at each of these models, spec-wise and how they compare tonally. All right, so the first guitar that we're going to be looking at is the least expensive guitar on the list today, and that is the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. As you can see, there's not much to it. It's basically a stripped down Les Paul. Uh, there's no carved top. It is basically just flat, um, and you'll see the differences for those of you who aren't familiar with Les Pauls as we go through some of the other ones. But what it's designed for is the beginner. So this is your entry level into the Les Paul world that gives you that feel and that tone of a Les Paul at a lower price geared towards students or beginners. Um, you've got the short 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, two humbucking pickups, a three way, one volume, one tone. So it's basically simplified throughout. It's a satin finish, it's a bolt on neck, two humbucking pickups with a tunematic bridge, a rosewood fingerboard, a nylon nut up here, and really as much guitar you can get for the money in this package. Uh, $199 is the price tag for these generally, so go to our website alamomusic.com to check the latest pricing or give us a call or send us an email. Um, but again, that's what this is geared towards. So if you are just starting out, you've never picked up a guitar in your life and you want something that is a Les Paul um, and you have about 200 bucks, this guitar is designed for you. It's not designed if you have been playing for a while, you're not going to be happy with this guitar. You're not going to be happy with the feel, the functionality, or the tone that you get out of it because your ears have, de have developed and adapted to the point that you're going to want more. Feel-wise, you're going to want more. Uh, the frets are going to be a little scratchier compared to, say, one of the more expensive Epiphones over my shoulder. Um, the setup's not going to be as nice. I mean, it's still a good playable guitar at the $200 price point for someone who's starting out. If you have already been playing for a while, however, you want something that has a bit more fit and finish to it as well as some additional options. And that's where we move up in price. So, if you're starting out and you've never played guitar before, check this guitar out to get into the Les Paul world. If you've been playing for a bit, let's look at the next one. We recently featured this next guitar in a video we did talking about some of the best guitars for beginners. This is the Epiphone Les Paul Standard. Now, 
It can get a little confusing when you start looking at Les Paul model numbers. There are a whole lot of variations upon a Les Paul standard. This is just the Les Paul standard, no additional uh, aspects after that. Um, uh, in this particular case, it's in a beautiful Pelham blue color with cream binding. You've got inlays here up on the fr uh, Rosewood fretboard now, uh, parallelogram inlays. It's a nylon nut. You've got your three-way toggle in the traditional position, okay, with your rhythm and lead, or as I like to call them, Ginger and Marianne. Um, you've got humbucking pickups. These are burst bucker style fully potted pickups. And you have a volume and tone for each pickup. Okay, so that's your rhythm volume, or basically neck volume, neck tone, bridge volume, bridge tone. And you can put them in any configuration. You can blend between the two pickups with this kind of layout as well. And it's again, it's that shorter scale that we uh, typically identify Les Paul with. This has some other nice features to it. Uh, one of the biggest ones to help with tuning, tuning stability is going to be the Grover tuners that this guitar comes equipped with. So it's an upgrade from the tuners that we find in lower models of this Les Paul. So this really is where you know, if you move up to a little bit over $400 price point, you are getting a lot of money in the Epiphone brand for a Les Paul. That is very, it's called the standard, but this is actually very traditional, um, other than maybe the paint job, very traditional in the Les Paul world. Um, traditional pick guard, traditional style pickups, traditional control layout, and no additional options, which we'll see on a few other guitars here in a minute. One point that I want to make on these guitars, um, I may, I, for those of you who are watching this, if you are, again, learning and you're learning about guitars, this is going to be a term that comes up as we identify some of the differences in these pickups. So I, we should talk about it right now. These pickups come fully potted. Now what that means is that the pickup has a bobbin on it, just like this guitar over my shoulder here. On a humbucker, there's two of these uh, bobbins with wire wrapped around them to create a coil. When you put a cover on them like this, it changes the tone and it changes the look of the pickup. What manufacturers will do is they will make pickups that are either potted or not potted. Potted means that the most commonly the pickup is dipped into a paraffin, like wax. And what that does is it fills up all of the empty space within the pickup cover so that there's no air gaps in there. If you have air gaps in there, what it can do is it can create um, feedback, microphonic feedback that is not the pleasing type of feedback that you generally want. So potting pickups is pretty cool if you're going to be playing with higher gain levels to prevent that microphonic feedback. However, sometimes you want a pickup that's not potted. The most original uh, PAF, which is patent applied for pickups that Gibson made back in the 50s, were not potted. And so that microphonic feedback was just part of the nature of the pickups. However, you also have another aspect to non-potting, and that is it creates a bit more of an acoustic tone in the pickup, um, and that air, for a lot of players, creates kind of a liveliness that you might not otherwise have because there's there's kind of an echoing chamber in there, so to speak. So they're very minor changes, and again, which one appeals to you as a player really depends upon your style of music. So if you're going to be playing with gain, uh, where feedback is a good possibility, then you probably want to go with a potted pickup. And so it's important to pay attention to these kinds of specs. So these great pickups designed by Epiphone here in the US, potted, they're uh, kind of a medium gain level, and they sound fantastic, which you'll hear in just a second. So that's the Epiphone Les Paul standard.
So this wonderful red beauty that's sitting in my lap is the next step up from the guitar that we just looked at. This is the Epiphone Les Paul Standard Plus Top Pro. So what it adds is a few upgrades from the standard. Primarily you get a veneered flamed maple top. Now there's some confusion that I see on the internet sometimes about the construction of these guitars so I want to clarify. All of these guitars that are standards, including the one that we just looked at with the Pelham blue color, is a mahogany body with a maple cap. When you get a flame option on this Plus Top Pro, they add a maple veneer that has flame to it, or maybe quilt, okay? That's a figuring in the maple. Now, you see that on a high-end Gibson Les Paul, because the top is solid maple that throughout the piece has that figuring. Doing that at this price point would not be feasible, okay? It's just the wood's too precious in order to carve a thick piece of flamed maple or quilted maple and still get it in at this price point. So what Epiphone does is they put a veneer on the top of it, but the cap is still maple. This is not an all mahogany guitar with a thin veneer of maple. It's a mahogany and maple guitar with a thin veneer of maple. Okay, so that's an important uh, distinction that sometimes people confuse. What does that veneer get you? Well, tonally it doesn't do anything, it just looks awesome. And particularly in some different colors that this has, like blue, the red, the sunbursts, you really can get that 50s, early 60s, flame top Les Paul uh, look that you may be going for. It's the quintessential Les Paul that we all typically identify with the guitar. Other than that, the layout's pretty similar. We've got Grover tuners again, rosewood fingerboard, 24.75 inch scale. Um, you've got the parallelogram uh, inlays here and vintage humbucking pickups. These again are also potted, but they're otherwise very similar to the PAF style pickups. And then this adds a really nice feature in these two pots. So we talked before that you have, with this layout, a three-way toggle, which allows you to pick between the pickups, and then volume and tone for each one. On this guitar, one of the upgrades that you get is that these are push-pull pots, okay, for either of the volume controls. What that does is that splits the pickup so that you get a humbucking sound, or when you pull it, you get a single coil sound. It coil taps and shuts off one of the coils, thinning that sound out and giving you a bit more high end, that glassier uh, single coil sound that we are generally familiar with from say like a Stratocaster. So it adds a lot of versatility. Rather than three tones, you effectively have, what, six tones? We can do rhythm or a neck pickup in humbucking mode or coil tap. We could do both pickups as humbuckers or both as coil taps, that's two, three actually. We could turn one off, that's four. Turn the other one off, that's five. Go to tr the bridge pickup, six humbucking, seven single coil. So you have a lot of versatility with this guitar in order to shape the response of the pickups and of course the volume blend that's always available with this layout as well. So who does this appeal to? You know, if you've been playing for a while and you don't have maybe Gibson money to afford a USA built Gibson Les Paul, but you want a lot of that versatility and the looks of that guitar, this is a fantastic playing guitar and this definitely appeals to the intermediate to upper intermediate player who's been playing a while. This will be great for a beginner if you can afford this price point. Um, and you know, really this could be a second or primary guitar for a working musician. It really is that good out of the box that you could go and you could gig with this guitar and have all of the versatility that it comes with. So let's check out the tones that we get out of this guitar.
Okay, so now we're moving over to the Gibson USA Les Paul models. Now, these, this is not the full lineup of Les Pauls. What we're looking at is three of the most popular ones that we have found in our store that players tend to uh, go to. Starting off at the other end of our wall is this beautiful gold top classic. Now the Les Paul Classic has had various iterations. The ones for this year are some of my favorites because you get a lot of great rock and roll straight ahead features that make this fantastic guitar for the uh, the gigging musician uh, or the collector alike. The beautiful finish option, my favorite of this is the gold tops. Now you have three finish options on this guitar for this year. Gold top, heritage sunburst, and an ocean burst which has like a green to teal burst finish on it. Very cool. I happen to be a fan of this gold top with the zebra pickups look. So let's talk about some of the specs on this guitar. It's a mahogany body with a maple cap with the gold top painted on it. The back is natural. We have our traditional layout with speed knobs. Okay, So these are not the top hat knobs. These are very fast, very easy to get to, again, with the gigging musician in mind. We have our traditional three-way toggle switch. For this year, notice that Gibson has removed that puck because really at this point you should know which one's rhythm, which one's treble, and it gives it a cleaner overall look. The pickups are uncovered pickups uh, with zebra bobbins, and they are 57 uh, classics. They're a bit of a hotter output, and since they don't have a cover on them, it gives you a bit more high and mid-range that the cover uh, can sometimes kind of taper down. So what that means is that this guitar has a lot of gain and it has a lot of bite when you really want to get into it. The setup on it is fantastic. They set all of these up uh, really well at the Gibson factory. Nylon net uh, or nut up here at the top of the neck. And then we have Grover locking tuners up here. Again, with the gigging musician in mind. If you break a string, you pull it through, you tighten the wheel down on the back. Let me show you guys. You can see that you have these thumb wheels, right? I'm not gonna touch them right now because the string will come out. But what you do is you just pull the string taut, tighten that down, cut the end off, tune it to pitch. That's it, it's an easy string change. Stop bar, tunematic style bridge. This is the ABR style with the wire going across. So kind of a, a throwback style tunematic that's on here and, and actually something that I tend to prefer to be perfectly honest. Rosewood fingerboard and it's just set up immaculately well, I mean, right out of the case. These are fantastic guitars. Um, with the standard kind of low oval uh, C profile. So it's a fast playing neck, it's fast playing uh, fingerboard, and it has a lot of traditional nods to it. So um, if you can see this in the video, or some of the up close shots that we have, you have binding that's covering the sides of the, the uh, fret. That's a, a little nod that of something that Gibson has done for a number of years recently. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Some players love that, some players don't. So keep it in mind as part of the specs of this guitar. What else can we say? It's got some weight to it, and that's going to help with the sustain and the overall growl of this guitar. It's more traditional in that regard. It doesn't have any modern weight relief like the standard that we're going to look at in a little bit. But it is just a scorcher of a guitar. So if you play in a rock band or a blues band and you want something with some gain and bite, you've got to take a look at this guitar. If you want something that doesn't break the bank but has all of, just oozes the Les Paul uh, tone and feel that you want, you've got to take a look at this guitar. Coming in at about $2,000 is the current price of the Les Paul Classic, so it's huge value. Check it out.
Okay, next up we have the quintessential Les Paul from back in the day, reborn in the 2017 Gibson Les Paul traditional. And everything's traditional about this. There's no weight relief in this guitar whatsoever. It's got a traditional thickness mahogany body, maple cap. On these guitars, it is a double A flame top. We have a burst bucker one and two in the neck and bridge position for the pickups. We've got a traditional kind of C shaped neck. It feels comfortable. It's not really any thicker than the classic. 24.75 uh, inch uh, scale, nylon nut. Again, very traditional here. We've got these Gibson Deluxe tuners with the, the Ivroid kind of uh, aged knobs on them. So no locking tuners on this. We do not have the cover on this one. We also do not have the pick guard, which kind of belies the traditional slant or aim of this guitar. However, those are in the case. So if you are someone who wants a pick guard and you want that little puck, um, then it's that, that poker chip's in the case for you. The, um, the pick guard's in the case for you as well. I really like what Gibson's doing with these this year. So let me explain what's going on with the pick guards. In years past, there's always, you, there's two types of players with Les Pauls. People who like the pick guard and people who don't. And in the past, if you didn't like the pick guard, you had to take the pick guard off and it left a screw hole right there and it left a screw hole right here on the side. That was there, period. Um, then they made some models that just didn't have a pick guard. They made some standards that had the, the pick guard where it would kind of slot into the sides of the pickup rings and that was, that was okay, but it, you know, it had a screw that wasn't really screwed to anything. So, you know, it's kind of funky. This year, I think they've, they've, really, they've really hit what we ought to have, which is the option. It comes without it, there's no hole. If you want to add it, it's easy enough to do. So, as I was saying, there's no weight relief, burst bucker pickups, uh, traditional knobs, traditional wiring, uh, they have uh, the orange caps and the uh, traditional wiring throughout there. Everything is wired by hand on the pots. There's no circuit boards. There's no nothing like that. This is basically your 59 Les Paul at a bargain. So you can go Gibson Custom Shop and you can get a reissued 59 and those are fantastic guitars. But for less money, you can get a traditional and get probably about 90% of the way there. Traditional nitro is finished, traditional colors. This is Heritage Burst. This is what most of us think of when we think of Gibson Les Paul. The options that are available on this are Honey Burst and Antique Burst. So you can uh, go to our website, alamomusic.com, go to Gibson's website, gibson.com, or you can contact us and we can send you uh, photos of the actual guitars we have in stock in those finishes. My favorites are Honey Burst and Heritage Burst. Um, you know, it's really, this is, this is the Les Paul. When you think of Les Paul, this is it. And so it's really hard to kind of get away from this package, this combination of feel and weight and tone. And if you don't believe me, check it out because we're about to put it through its paces. Who does this guitar appeal to? If you are a collector, if you love vintage instruments but you can't afford one, Let's break it down this way. You can buy a vintage 50s or 60s Les Paul for tens and tens of thousands of dollars, or you could buy this one for around 2300 as where as current prices are. So this appeals to the professional player, the collector alike, and someone who loves the tone of a vintage guitar. You don't want any modern appointments. You don't want any modern ease. You don't want any of that stuff that they might be adding on guitars. You're a bit of a guitar curmudgeon who knows how to play and you want the guitar in your hands that's not gonna have any weight relief or anything like that. You want a Les Paul. This is it. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
So now we come to this beauty that I would love to take home on a regular basis. This is the 2017 Les Paul Standard. It is the standard bearer of the lineup. Now, what Gibson has been doing with the Les Paul Standard in recent years is utilizing this guitar to push the innovations and improvements on the model that they have made over the years. If you want something traditional, they have the traditional. But if you want what Gibson considers the best guitar that they're making right now, the best Les Paul that they're making right now, then that is this guitar. Mahogany body construction, maple cap. The maple on this is going to be triple A flamed maple. But you know, to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes we get one in like this and I look at it and go, that looks like way more than triple A flame. This is just a gorgeous top. This particular finish is honey burst. It's also available in heritage cherry burst um, and oh, blueberry burst, I almost said ocean, um, and then a bourbon burst, which is new for this year, which is a very cool, darker color. Uh, if you want to see pictures of any of these, if you go to our website and contact us, we can send you photos of all of the guitars that we have in stock in these various finishes and tops. Because each one is different, each one is unique, that's part of the beauty of this being real wood. Uh, you know, a not a veneer, it's not going to look like any other guitar. This is going to be very unique to each and every one. Some of the benefits of this guitar, we have locking tuners, locking Grover tuners like we saw in the classic, parallelogram inlays over a rosewood fingerboard with a very fast playing neck on this one. Um, I'm trying to think, this is a Burst Bucker Pro and a rhythm, uh, in the rhythm and lead, Burst, Burst Bucker Pros on both. A little bit more output gain than the Burst Bucker 1 and 2 has. We have again our traditional three-way toggle. And on this guitar, where it really shines as far as versatility is here in the control setup. So what you have is push-pull pots for each of the controls, for each volume and for each tone. Either of the volumes will split the coils and turn it into a single coil. If you pull the tone for the neck pickup out, that puts both guitars in parallel rather in than in series. What it does is it kind of thins the sound out, gives you this Peter Green-esque tone to it. Um, and that works if it's either in humbucker or single coil mode. And so you get a lot of versatility right there. It's really cool to kind of play rhythm with that and then hit it off, your, you know, push it back in and get your humbuckering sound in series and play lead. And then the switch down here is basically a blow switch. It's a bypass switch. So regardless of how you have your control set up, regardless of where the three-way toggle is, regardless of what your volume is, regardless of what your tone is, when you push, pull that out, it is your bridge pickup, your lead pickup on 11, okay, as Nigel would say. Straight out, bypassing everything through the amp, nonstop, balls to the wall, lead playing with that. And so that's really cool. And I'm going to show you here uh, kind of to demonstrate what's nice about that is you can do a blend here, right? You can have your, maybe your treble down a bit, the, the rhythm pick up, up a little bit. And then when it's time for lead, just pull that out. You don't have to change anything. You can go right back to your previous settings. So this is definitely a pros guitar with all of the sounds that you can get out of it. This, this is just, fantastic. It plays well and it is probably one of the most versatile electric guitars that you're going to find on the market today. In addition to that, you've got the locking tuners, you also have modern weight relief, so this is probably the lightest of any of the Gibson Les Pauls that are currently in production today. Fantastic playability, fit, finish, looks, and versatility. What more can you want? Coming in at under $3,000, about $27.99 is the current price point of these. Again, go online to confirm that on our website or Gibson's because that is subject to change. But for under $3,000, you get one of the most beautiful, well-playing, sounding, historical guitars that there is today. It's really hard to justify getting anything else that's kind of like a Les Paul when you could get this. It's fantastic. So let's put it through its paces so you can see exactly how versatile it is.
finally, we have a bit of an outlier in our mix that we wanted to show you. And that is a newer model from Gibson. That is the ES Les Paul. The ES Les Paul is built in the Memphis factory where the rest of the ES guitars are. The ES guitars are basically any of the guitars that you'd see that are hollow body or semi hollow body with F holes on it typically. Um, so the ES Les Paul combines some of the features that you'd see in like a 335 or a 339 in the Les Paul body and shape. What's really cool about this guitar is a lot of the, the throwback vintage specs, uh, specs that they do on this guitar. It's got a bit of a thicker neck. It's a C shape, but it's a rounded C. It has a bit more wood to the back of it. It feels really comfortable in the hand. It's also strengthened up here at the headstock to provide some additional strength um, and stability right here at the joint where it begins to tilt backward at a 17 degree angle. It's got a bone nut on it, which helps with tone, but also helps with tuning stability. A lot of people don't realize if you're using a bone nut that's unbleached, it's basically self-lubricating. I'm not gonna go into too much about that because it kind of gets gross. I'll leave it to your imagination, but it's great for tone and for tuning stability. We've got an ABR one style bridge uh, tailpiece here and a traditional layout with the two volumes, two tones. There's no push-pull pots here. It's a three-way toggle, Ginger Marianne right here, rhythm and lead. The pickups on these are one of some of the nicest pickups. These are MHS pickups. Now what that stands for is Memphis Historic Spec. Gibson says that these are the closest that they currently make to the patent applied for pickups, the PATH pickups of yesteryear that is that holy grail of tone that everybody's always trying to get back to. Now I'll let you in on a little secret about these pickups that give it that tone. They're covered, they're not potted, and they're underwound. Now a lot of people want hot pickups, the hotter the better. In my personal opinion, something that I found to be true is I like a slightly underwound pickup with a bit more gain on the amp. What I find is that you get more of an acoustic nature out of the pickups. Um, you get kind of more resonance from the guitar, you get more high end, uh, you just, and you get that smoothness that we equate with those vintage guitars. And so that's what Gibson has loaded this guitar with. Now since it is a semi-hollow guitar, we do have maple going down the middle, and then the wings here are going to be um, hollowed out. Beautiful um, maple veneer in a faded burst on this um, with a transparent uh, finish on the back in black so you can kind of see some of the grain. It's probably hard to see um, on the video. Um, it's extremely light. That should probably go without saying since it's a semi-hollow guitar, but it's extremely light. And it does get those vintage Les Paul sounds, but it also gets kind of a unique character to it. This bloom um, and really rich mid-range that's typical of a semi-hollow guitar. So if you want something that's versatile, that's a collector's piece, that's beautiful, that can kind of give you some of that ES335 tone without the big body, but also give you some of that bite and low end growl from a Les Paul, that's what this guitar is. That's what it was made for. And it's fantastic. So again, if you'd like to see any high res photos of this guitar or in any of the finishes, go online and contact us or give us a call. We'd gla be glad to send some of these out to you and want to find a home for guitars like this because this is fantastic and if you guys don't get it, I'm just going to take it home because I love this guitar. So let's put it through the amp so you can hear that vintage tone that we can get out of this guitar.
So I hope you enjoyed this video of our Gibson and Epiphone Les Paul Buyer's Guide. The idea is to give you all the information that you need to make an informed decision of which guitar suits your needs. If you have any additional questions that we didn't cover in this video, comment below, go to our website and contact us or call us today so that we can discuss with you what would probably fit your needs best from the Gibson and, Les, or, and Epiphone Les Paul lineup that we have featured in this video as well as others that we haven't. We want to put the right guitar in your hands and help you make music. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.